just coming to the center here in itself there's great relief and relaxation the pristine space that we are all creating together um, it's very relaxing and very different than than my experience of other places where obviously open intelligence is available everywhere the nature of our mind this stable basis of our mind yet to come together to a place that is completely dedicated to the recognition of open intelligence and being of benefit, we feel it right away, many of us. And there's a great magnetizing force in that. And I know that this magnetizing force to Candice's teaching and the balanced view really allowed me to see in myself the, that in the past I would intellectualize everything I would try to figure out why and how things work in a certain way and all of that but something in the teaching of balanced view well, I had all kinds of ideas but I found myself coming back listening again to the talks without understanding them even in the beginning so much and just coming back to this great magnetizing force of reality as it is so refreshing after decades of trying to find the answer to what is going on here and why why do i feel the way i feel and what what is the purpose and meaning the context of my precious life and everyone's life and then to find that it's the greatest blessing it's really the greatest gift of all and i'm forever grateful because i i came across the balance view training 10 years ago and I could imagine how my life would have looked like without meeting the training. The choices that I would have taken uh, and the, the, just the everyday life. Constantly thinking and, and analyzing my thoughts, emotions and sensations without knowing the fundamental peaceful nature. The essence of reality as it is. And, um, the introduction to open intelligence is also so straightforward. It really shows us that it's something that is always available, always been there, always will be, be there. We simply ignored it. We didn't know about it. Not like, oh, I was such an idiot for not recognizing. I was simply not introduced to it properly and directly. That was my experience. So to be introduced to open intelligence by stopping thinking for a moment, and you can try it. What remains? There's a sense of alertness, openness, the, the power to know. This is open intelligence, always shining, always present. And of course, then we have our next data stream flowing on by, our thought, emotion or sensation. And it's completely inseparable from, of, from open intelligence. There's not a switch button where I thought in the past before being introduced to open intelligence or when this thought comes like anger or wanting or hatred or something like that or desire, then it means that I'm not getting it, that I'm not in the state, that I'm not in the present moment or whatever I called it. And there was a constant struggle there because my data and I'm guessing that yours as well are probably quite unpredictable. They are naughty, unpredictable, always changing. And if we spend our entire life energy not being aware, not being re uh, introduced to the fundamental nature's open intelligence, we will be constantly after in the chase. Chase trying to reach somewhere which seems better than this here and now. Uh, it's a better place. It's not now for sure. And usually the way it's described in many books and teachings and, and, and I don't know, people around it, it's very hard to get there and it requires years and years of effort and um, struggle and lots of thinking as well or trying not to think at all, which is an effort in itself. So for me, this goal of open intelligence, <laughs> as, as I read more books and practiced more things, it seemed just okay probably not in this lifetime and it's just seemed f further and further away and to know that it's always available it's the greatest gift and then we just gain confidence in that in short moments repeated many times short moments of instinctive recognition recognition of what's already present already present natural perfection ease complete relaxation that don't require any 
wiggling around with our data streams or steering the pond of uh, the muddy pond, steering it to try and find clarity. Because once we stop for a short moment, then all of this sediment settles and we see clear, clearly. And that's exactly how we can use our mind in short moment. So simple, so direct, and anyone can implement it regardless of the data streams. That was also refreshing because I thought in order to be deserving of this amazing thing like complete mental and emotional stability, love, cooperation, then probably not for someone like me with my set of data streams and history and all of that. I thought I need to refine and purify a bit, you know, that part here or that part there in order to be at least deserving of that. And Candice, uh, Candice's message and, and the beautiful teaching of the Four Mainstays just says, you know, as it is, as it is, let your mind do as it will without needing to fix it, without needing to correct it in any way. And it requires the courage of complete relaxation. It's funny, right? That as human beings, we've been trained so hard to, that we are afraid to simply relax as it is because we might go crazy, because this thought will come, this memory from the past. So that's where the power of short moments and the training of balance view is so crucial, because we get to see even hatred as a beautiful display of open intelligence, not an opposition to perfect love. And I discovered it in when I did the 12 empowerments, and I really went through all my belief systems and assumptions. I noted them down, I shared them with the group, and I saw my ideas around love. It always needs to feel warm in my heart. I need to feel open. I need to have just flowery th uh, thoughts, you know, about cats on YouTube playing around and flowers falling from the sky. And I thought, okay, that's love. Okay, now I'm loving. And what about all the 99% <laughs> of the time where I'm, I'm not in this state of feeling you know, YouTube cats and whatever is your favorite thing. So I love cats, so that's <laughs> what I do. And uh, yeah, when I think about my cat immediately, I have like tears in my eyes. So that's the kind of pure love that I knew before Balance View. So with short moments repeated many times, I started to see that this love that I limited to only certain descriptions, grandma, cat, nieces, and myself once in a while every five years <laughs> or something like that, then to see that it's available in every moment, inseparable from anger, hatred, and it's the best to discover that when we are really in the midst of like self-hatred, for example, something that I really try to avoid by drinking aloe vera juice and uh, w checking if my spine is upright or not, then to see that, or, or whatever you're trying to do or did, uh, uh, then to see that, wow, it, perfect love is completely inseparable from any description that I can conjure up. And that's in the crucial juncture there of the inseparable nature of open intelligence and data, like the color blue in the sky, we find complete relief. It becomes funny, like in an intimate relationship, my expectation based on Bollywood, Hollywood, and Disney was that uh, my partner will always provide me the right data streams, you know, the, uh, always, always, because that's what people do, right? And then when we live our everyday life and we switch off the telly, we really see that the reality is quite different. Some things are really annoying and ridiculous things can really like, you know, hair in the sink or not closing the, the lid of the toothbrush or things that can really create a chaos and ruin an entire day, they become a reminder to take a short moment. Take responsibility, that's what we learn in Empowerment One, that we can actually, we actually have the choice to not be a victim of our data streams. Take responsibility to, for the, to, the, to empower ourselves in every given moment. And that's amazing, so then whether your partner or potential partner or, or your fantasy does something like that, you see that you are, even with the button pushing, you don't need to be affected. And initially it helps to just like come back to the four mainstays, ride to the trainer, 
or, or come here or, or listen to a talk and not engage in the old ways of conversing about your data streams and oh you made me feel like that why it's again and and you write it in your diary that again your partner made you feel like oh you know it's so tedious and conventional so we have to bring in fresh open intelligence open intelligence and opening opening intelligence are synonymous they are not two opening intelligence has the um, power of inexhaustibility in a way that it's forever expanding never limited i never heard this about myself before balance view in in such a direct way that my intelligence is vast like clear blue sky and it's perfect and forever expanding the states that I strived for before balance view was a very, when I look at it today, was very static. I will reach this point of enlightenment or whatever I called it, uh, pure awareness or things like that. And that's it. What happens next? I'll be stuck there forever in some kind of state. And to see that there is continuous opening of our strengths, gifts and talents, stability that just deepens love that becomes warmer and warmer like bright sun that's amazing inexhaustible open intelligence never ending and um and there we see also you know with antidotes it's such a great topic especially here in goa where everywhere you look there can be a potential antidote or everywhere you think in your mind something to like a curative fantasy something that will fix the data stream that we have right now. So I know for myself with specific antidotes, after completing the 12 empowerment, some completely dropped. Like suddenly I realized that I don't smoke anymore. No one told me don't smoke, it's not beneficial. <laughs> oh, uh, balance view participants, they don't smoke because it's not true. Um, I suddenly f realized after a while, ah, I'm, I'm not smoking cigarettes anymore. It just stopped like that. For other people, it's other things. And with some antidotes, it really took a while of using the four mainstays to see that there is freedom in immediacy of perception. During the craving of whatever it is, the chocolate cake, the sex, the naughty sights or, or the drinking or whatever it is, there's freedom in immediacy of perception during that, during the activity or just thinking about it during the activity. And also at the end when there's a sense of relief mixed with primordial guilt. Do you know that one? The primordial guilt that we've been taught since we've been very young. <laughs> no matter what is the religion, usually they're very influencing the way we look at ourselves. That something about us is fundamentally flawed. <laughs> and by doing whatever we did just a second ago with this antidote, then we are probably going to go not to the nice place but to the bad place and we will be forever stuck there so all of these conventional ways of looking at ourselves in the midst of whatever you're doing to rely on open intelligence just provide such great freedom and the power the strength to know what to do that will be of greatest benefit to all and if it's challenging the support is always available but try it once you know with the antidote that you are describing, there's no rule like you shouldn't do this or the other thing. But try it with your favorite antidote and rest while through all these phases that I just described and see whether open intelligence was affected by that. And, um, and that's really the cure, you can say, in affliction itself, in the antidote itself. Open intelligence, the, the injection of pure beneficial potency and power that is available in every moment. And once we know it, I know that for myself, once I uh, was introduced and I got to know, okay, this is the real thing, I want to pour everything into it. I don't want to waste my life anymore in, in trying to have better states and trying to fix my emotions and trying to find who to blame. I don't want it. Here's a cat. And, um, you know, so I really put everything into the four mainstays, into gaining confidence in open intelligence. And, and hello, and wanting more and more from this, um, 
yeah, inexhaustible treasure of open intelligence because really living a human life, and this is one of the metaphors in the 12 empowerments, is living human life is like being on an island of gold where everything is gold. Everything. Wherever we look, whatever we feel, everything is pure gold of open intelligence. And this is something that we get to recognize. <laughs>